Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's delve a little bit more into the subframe structure of the data. Remember, there are five subframes that make up each frame and 25 frames that make up an entire navigation message. The navigation message is sent every 12 and a half minutes in totality and every subframe or every frame takes about 30 seconds. Well, not about, it takes exactly 30 seconds and every subframe takes exactly six seconds. So what is in those five subframes for every frame. The first subframe contains the satellite clock correction terms. Now those are extremely important. If it wasn't for the correction terms, the difference between the GPS receiver clock and the satellite clock would be too great to get an accurate position with the receiver. Thus, we need to be updated with those correction terms in order to get a better precise location of the receiver. Plus it also contains the GPS weak number. Now the GPS week number cycled through every about 20 years or so. I'll give you the exact dates of those turnovers, but it does contain what week we are in for the GPS system. The second subframe contains the precise ephemeris data of the satellite and subframe three contains also the precise ephemeris data of the satellite. Notice part one and part two. That data contains the health of the satellite and specific information about the position of the satellite and the orbit of the satellite. Notice that the first three subframes are updated every 30 seconds, which means that in every frame, the first three subframes contain data that is always recycled, always renewed, always updated, so that we have the latest precise clock correction terms and the precise ephemeris data of the satellite we are listening to or receiving data from. The last two subframes, subframe 4 and subframe 5, is not updated every 30 seconds. It is updated every 12 and a half minutes. Notice that subframe 4 contains ionospheric information because the ionosphere is one of the biggest detractors of accurate data from the satellite. As the data goes or as the, as the carry waves goes through the ionosphere, it is bent or changed because of the refraction of the ionosphere and because of that there's a quite a big error that is added to the information from the satellite so we need to know more about the ionosphere and the condition of the ionosphere to try and correct for it. We have the UTC data which is the universal time clock data and then we have the almanac data for the space vehicles 25 through 32. The subframe 5 contains almanac data for space vehicles 1 through 24 plus it also contains the almanac reference time. Now that data in itself, you notice that every subframe or every frame cannot contain all the information of all the space vehicles. So it's stretched out over all 25 subframes and the data is then renewed every 12 and a half minutes. With other words, every subframe contains different information about the space vehicles, but all together, all 25 frames together, then makes up the entire message. So the note here. The subframe 4 and 5 of every frame are needed to complete the entire navigation message. We need to have 4 and 5 from all 25 frames. That's a total of 25 times 2 or 50 subframes to contain the entire information of the almanac for all the space vehicles 1 through 32, the almanac reference time, the atmospheric conditions, and the UTC data. All of that is contained in all 25 frames each frame containing subframe 4 and 5 all put together total of 25 times 2 or 50 subframes containing all this information then which is then updated every 12 and a half minutes. We can't wait 12 and a half minutes for corrections on the clock. We need to have that updated every 30 seconds because after 30 seconds the correction is going to deviate from the true correction and therefore must be updated every 30 seconds to keep very accurate position information of the receiver as it gets data from the satellite. Hence, the structure of the content of the subframes of the navigation message.